Hi there, my name is Tini and this is my sixth year teaching English. I've decided to start this podcast to help new teachers. I'm planning to talk about building an online presence for your services, creating educational resources and taking care of yourself, juggling all that comes with being a teacher in the 21st century classroom. Today's topic is building rapport with your students, the first part of a two-part mini-series. 12 tips to build rapport with your students. Are you new to teaching and um, all the things you should be doing seem overwhelming? Been there, done that. When I became an English teacher, I realized that I hadn't thought about a burning question. I asked myself what I teach, how I teach it and how I assess my students. These are valid questions and it's essential to deal with them. However, looking back, I should have known that there is more to making your students learn efficiently. We tend to overlook another equally important aspect of teaching that is at the core of how do I build rapport with my students. If you want to know the answer and build fulfilling relationships with your students, listen up to find out more. I'm excited to share my 12 tips to build rapport with your students. Take note of the quick fixes that match each tip so you can start shaping the relationship with your students in your next class. Number one, call your students by name. The first tip speaks for itself, but it might be challenging to use, especially when you work with larger groups of students. I usually teach one-to-one lessons or small groups, even so I'm not good with names. For this reason, I always write my students' names down. I make sure to check their names before meeting them, either in person or online. As time goes by and you get to know your students, remembering their names won't be an issue anymore. Quick fix. Write down your students' names and if you work with larger groups of people, add the distinguishing feature to each name. Even though this name list is only for your personal use, be kind when you think of traits that help you tell your students apart. Number two, care about your students' interests and aspirations. Your students' hobbies and goals make up a huge part of who they are. You might find it easier to motivate your students when you present them with topics that they are invested in. You can tailor vocabulary words to fit topics your students are interested in. When it comes to teaching adult learners, they often have a realistic idea about the vocabulary they want and need to learn. It makes more sense to teach them words they will end up using. Discussion questions and uh, icebreaker activities are a great way to find out where your students' interests lie. Quick fix. The next time your students talk about themselves, make note of the free time activities and entertainment they enjoy. Make sure to occasionally ask your students about them. Suppress your students with a topic that matches their interest without losing sight of the learning objectives. Number three, show a sense of humor. Many of us can remember at least one teacher who would beat any stand-up comedian. Not everybody is naturally funny though. I can get behind the idea of bringing out our A-game, yet I don't want to put on an act. If you are a genuinely funny person, you don't necessarily need to tune it down in class. Being able to laugh at your own expense comes in handy on days when either you or your students are a little tongue-tied. Quick fix. If you make a mistake, just laugh it off. Crack a joke or share a funny meme. Don't get discouraged if your students don't appreciate your comedic genius. Finding age-appropriate material is key. Don't shy away from self-deprecating humor if it matches your personality. Number four, be there for your students outside of class. 
You should do a little soul searching and set healthy boundaries because it's a double-edged sword. I agree that you should be there for your students, but with reasonable limitations. I don't believe in arriving to class early and staying late because sticking to my schedule is a priority to me. I try to be as punctual as possible and I take my well-deserved breaks. Lunchtime is also sacred. However, I allow my students to contact me outside of class. I have designated office hours and I've built an online presence. These days it could be easier to get in touch online for some students. Quick fix. Think about having office hours, setting up an email address or social media profile to keep in touch with your students. Don't be available 24-7, that's what automated responses are meant to do. You should treasure your downtime. Number five, be respectful. Respect is a two-way street in my book. If you want to earn the respect of your students, you should also treat them with respect. Under no circumstances should you ridicule or put down your students. If they are disruptive, try to bear in mind that it's not who they are, but what they do. I can't stress enough how important it is to take care of yourself. If you are overworked and you haven't had a good night's sleep for ages, it's more probable that you will overreact. Quick fix. Educate yourself about classroom management and learn from seasoned teachers in Facebook groups or forums. If a classroom management technique doesn't work for you and your students, try a different approach. Number six, be humble. You should be a person your students can look up to. Not a know-it-all who thinks that he or she is better than everybody else. Yes, your students know less about the subject matter than you, but that's the reason why you are in a privileged position to teach them. Put yourself in their shoes and keep in mind that you also had to start somewhere. You didn't become an expert in your field overnight either. Don't hold grudges if a student of yours outgrows you. Even though it's quite rare, it can happen and you shouldn't let it drive a wedge between you. Quick fix, surround yourself with people of different ages, experiences and areas of expertise. If there is somebody who knows more than you, learn from that person. When you meet somebody who knows less, you should help that person grow. That's it. Thank you for being here today. I hope you come back for the next six tips. Bye. Bye. -bye.